Hi everyone, Rising Fun Gaming here, and welcome to my playthrough of Monster Hunter Cross. In great anticipation for the upcoming Monster Hunter Generations, I thought it'd be a good idea to make a playthrough going through most of the mid to large size monsters. We're going to be introducing them and fighting them with a range of weapons and hunting styles. In this first episode, we're going to have a quick look at our surrounds in Belna Village and then we're going to go out and hunt a great Macau. So welcome to the brand new village. As I said, it's called Belna and we're in the Alps. And here are the famous Mufa. If I pat them, they're going to be nice enough to loose a hairball for me, which I can use with some of the Mufa specific armor and weapons in the game. And once we're done with giving them a nice little pet we can kiss them on the snout there it's very very cute indeed so we've got the village chief here he's going to vend lost lots of quests for us in the playthrough we will see that quite a few guest characters will be making cameos and appearing in not only Belna village but some of the legacy villages from previous generations like Kokoto, Poke and Yukumo um, so that's why we're seeing the rookie here from the ace team we've got this dude here called Callista at least in Japanese he's going to be um, talking to you about hunter arts and things like that as you gain them through going through the game yourself we've got the um, shop for armors and weapons we've got our little wyvarian blacksmith here also we've got the cat armor and weapon maker here which kind of gives you a little bit of a nostalgic feeling from games such as Portable 3rd, I think, where we had the little cat smithy as well. Got a couple of villages here just from Belna, Belna Villages. Got this guy who is a um, researcher from the Y Academy, and he will give you various things like some tickets from the Y Academy to make some um, very interesting looking weapons and stuff like that. We've got this brand new. Uh, Airu cat guy here and he is responsible for traveling or sending you in his little airship between different areas within the world of Monster Hunter Generations so if you want to take a balloon ride to Kokoto you can do that this is the basic general store here it's really really cool got another cameo from the um, the grandma Wyvirian out in uh, Poka Poka village or Chico Sands or whatever it was known as and um, of course the quest vendor and the fondue bistro managing kitchen cat here which is really really cool can make um, fondues here for your meals before you go out on hunts in the world of generation slash cross here this will be your home and inside you'll find yourself a replacement to the poogie well I won't get you all scared. The Poogies do not go away. You will find them in um, the Legacy Villages. But in Belna, you'll get um, a little Mufa, which you can do similar things to it that you could to the Poogie. You can um, pet it with the petting mini game. You can carry it around, change its clothing. I forget if you could do this to Poogie, but you can actually change its name here. And we've also got the Rodeo option for it. Um, if you've got your little palico friends about. So we'll just do the mini game. There you go. You always have to wait for that exclamation point to come out. It's a little bit after the music stops, but he's very, very cute. And the guild mum is here, not because she's making a little uh, visit to the village, it's because I can set her up as my custom room attendant. Uh, you can change between, I think, four or five towards the end of the game. So for example, we've got her, we've got the uh, Moga quest lady, we've got the Tanzia quest lady, and we've also got the little manager cat from Chico Sands. Um, from 4th gen of course so you can change those if you'd like to you've got your item and armor box as always here is the palico or nyanta board here and you can do various things such as 
change from hunter mode to nyanta mode so you can become the nyanta you can um, choose which uh, cat you have in your um, stable of cats I'm going to say um, to be the nyanta character you can also choose things like the palicos that will come along with you whether you're a nyanta or a hunter this will be the cats that come with you to help you out um, you can choose their support abilities their passive skills their equipment various other things like that here's the bed and I'll go to sleep here just to show off the animation of Fenny here it's really cute does that big flip onto the bed and we get a little Fenny as our loading screen animation which is a really nice touch it's very very cute okay and the other thing I'd like to remark about the village is of course we've got the uh, little post cat guy as well on the outskirts we've got a separate area with many um, very very handy things we've got good old uh, Kenyan Maru who you might recognize from 3 ultimate now he does lots of things for you um, you can commission him to send some cats out on farming runs and stuff like that so for example we've got three cats out on runs um, the number of carts you can send out will increase as you progress through the game the other big thing that he does is exchanging the Y Academy points for various goods we've got some sword and shield blade coatings there hunter art drink amongst other things there's also these other items you can purchase as well I think what were those are oh, they're like titles for your guild card you've got guild card backgrounds things like that you've also got pet clothing but this is grayed out because there's no more to buy as I've bought them all and then of course you've got the all-important tickets that you buy in order to um, take part in the deviant monster quests so he's got many functions for you out here next to the balloon here we've got good old Nyanto Summer uh, that's what they call him in the Japanese and you can do a little mini game for the Mianster Hunters the Monyanbu and what's happening here is we're just getting some cats coming back from a um, materials run to go get some iron for me they've got a whole bunch of scrap items as well which can be used for cat armor and the like but it's really really fun I'll just quickly show you how that works here so basically you choose which area you want to go to there's a low and a high rank I won't be going through the specifics here you've got rare and warning that just means some other monsters can appear if we send some monsters to say the desert area in high rank we can um, choose which we'd like I'm going to choose couple of yellow and a couple of red fighters and you'll see why in a second okay on the map we've got all these zones and the color of the trend or the um, I guess the fighting or skill type of the cat you'll see that I've um, I got two yellows and two reds before if those colors match um, they'll be able to pick up or carve off or otherwise extract um, items and monster carves from the same colored area zone there so if I shoot a couple of yellow cats to the Seregios zone here what you're not seeing in the uh, bottom screen is a cannon mini game you're aiming left to right so let me just um, bring that up for you now there we go and you've got your power so to get it to the Najarala let's do low power very nice shot so good we've got a couple of red cats there um, if they're you see the first cat that I chucked out he's crossing over three colored zones so he's going to grab things from all those areas which is ideal and if we want a couple of might seeds we'll just try to get these cats anywhere in the red zone here and you'll notice that the border of that cat is smaller um, I guess the energy or the tension as they call it in Japanese the higher energy the cats are the more um, kind of excited they are 
uh, the bigger those zones will be. So obviously the bigger the zone, the more coverage of the, the map you can get. And also they'll be more bouncy and stuff like that as well. And this last cat has got low tension as well. You can see the paw print times two down the bottom there. So he should have a small boundary around him as well. Okay, there we go. And we'll just bring that to full screen. So that's a quick look at that. We've got this little Neko girl and you can hire cats and, and the like here. We've got the training zone where you can send your uh, Palicos to train and you can learn all your skills and stuff that way. It's really, really nice. Well, actually, you don't learn your skills that way. You just get them to level up. There's the Palico board, the same one you would have found inside your house. And this guy, he gives you tickets and stuff like that. And he also gives you the all important training manuals, which is an item that can make the cat training even more efficient. And that's Belna and a brief uh, introduction to what's going on here. So next we want to go out and fight this great Macau finally. So what we're going to be doing, we're going to be doing the low rank version in the first episode of my playthrough here. And he first appears in Two Star Village, there he is. And we'll also get to see the brand new area with Monster Hunter Generations, that being the prehistoric frontier. Alright, so we're going to have some fondue. We're going to select the uh, actual menu type and the sources and stuff like that. Um, I've unlocked everything because it's towards the end of the game, but I'll just go ahead and eat one of the lower tier combinations here for defense up small. Okay. And yeah, just first option. I'm not going to be too OP. And we'll just buy it. Here's the cool animation that we get. So yeah, they you can order the different ingredients you want on your skewer, you dip it in the fondue, you've got a different sauce, and that's pretty much the system. It's, it's pretty in-depth actually, it can get pretty complicated. But anyway, um, before we go out, we'll just check our items here. Going to get rid of that, because I'm very low <laughs> on those Mega Dash juices. We'll bring some well done steaks. Alright, and this is where we go out into the big wide world. Quickly before we go out, I'll just quickly show my gear. This is the Belner Longsword. This is the starting series, as is the armor set here. Got all level 1 pieces here, so as not to be OP. I've got this talisman on, which I didn't mean to have, but it's going to give me 13 points to artillery, which isn't going to be coming into play whatsoever. Now the hunter, I mean the active skill that we get with this set is Divine Protection. We've also got six points to, um, what's it called, Maestro. Probably because, I don't know, you're an alpine man and you blow those big horns or something. I wonder why they put Maestro on that set. But anyway, welcome. Here we are finally to the Jurassic Frontier. I'm going to take away the cockpit view just for the initial parts of this and as you can see we're definitely in this mountainous region you can see we've probably come here via the balloon or blimp or maybe that's just set up for the overseer who knows a little area to rest here's your um, bed and camp and of course got this awesome big uh, it's called a telescope. I'm already forgetting. And we've got a good old returning character, good old Nyantaro. And should you want him to take care of some items, bring him back to camp for you if your uh, pouch is too full, you can give some stuff to him. And then you just go ahead and tell him to go. And you get this nifty little animation. And there he goes. <laughs> Godspeed, little buddy. You can see the uh, the big rivers and streams, the volcanoes in the background. Very fitting of a prehistoric frontier, I would say.
Now, what I absolutely adore about not just entering the Jurassic Frontier, but any other map within the game, when you enter Area 1, they give you this very uplifting, awesome music just to introduce you to the fact that you're in these areas. And we have the new Diplodocus or what's the other one? Brachiosaurus like herbivores. And um, they're very, very cool. These big fern like um, plant life as well. It's very, very cool. And you'll notice that they get up on high and they eat the very excellent nuts or seeds out of the top of some of these trees. This second area is really really cool because it really shows off that it is indeed a volcanic uh, zone. We've got the little Macau here, the equivalent of your jaggies and stuff like that. These are the uh, juvenile versions of the great Macau which we'll be fighting and um, you can see them hopping around, playing around, accidentally whipping his little brother there <laughs> and they're uh, they're learning their moves from their big great Macau brother, the big forward jump attacks, things like that. Alright, they're very cute. Just like the Jaggy, they can be called by the great version of themselves. They can be summoned. And there he is, finally the great Macau. And um, what a monster he is. Certainly one of my favourite new additions. We have no great Jaggy in this game, but we have an awesome replacement in the form of this pretty wild looking kangaroo-esque creature. He looks really really interesting and he sounds really really cool. Just like the great Jaggy he can um, call his little minion friends come to his aid and um, he really really reminds me of a kangaroo with his jumping around and stuff like that and that's one of his awesome forward launching attacks springboarding off that powerful tail of his okay so let's start actually fighting this guy now this fellow is weak to quite a few elements the best element you could use against him is fire, but I don't think you'll be doing too much strategy to that end early on in the game. Maybe by the time you come around to his high rank version you'll look to select your elements, stuff like that. But the areas you really want to be hitting on this guy are his tail and his head receiving massive damage from pretty much every damage type. To those zones. <laughs> Alright, that's one of the most fun things to do. He um, can go flying quite the distance when you um, hit him when he's on his tail. He's um, launching back on that old tail and generating a lot of potential energy for an incoming spring forward attack interrupt him in the middle of that, that potential energy can um, be released in the form of a massive flinch and a very satisfying one for a hunter to um, induce. One of the things that is a pretty cool design about him oh just with that is the variation of things he does when he's on his tail is he going to jump forward? Is he going to jump back? Is he just going to stay there and kick the air? And um, that was quite funny. I believe, did he just... Yeah, he just killed one of his little buddies to get me my sub-target. He's working for the good guys after all. You'll notice there's a bit of a tell. Well, actually, it's a lot of a tell. Um, just before he does the actual leap forward, he does a little roar there to let you know that he's angry. So what I've got in the background 
is an activated hunter art, which is my... Um, it's a Sakura Blossom Slash counter. Unfortunately, I whiffed that one. I would absolutely love to show off what that's like. So, um, I'll introduce something else. Which is new to the game, and it's no wonder why. It's called the Hunter Art Drink. Now, you can use this. If I just bring up the bottom screen real quickly. You'll see my Hunter Art gauge down the bottom flashing yellow and red. Shows that the Hunter Art gauge is going to build faster. Your Hunter Art gauge, the uh, amount of time it takes to charge, or the amount of actions you have to take to make it charge, will vary between the actual Hunter Arts themselves. I've got a very slow recharging one at the moment. Now Hunter Arts are interesting. Um, you can acquire gauge in them primarily through attacking monsters, through lending successive blows. You can do it through other means like doing a successful Bushido evade. That gives you a little bit of um, gauge which is nice. Nice bonus. If you're in striker style and striker style only you'll also get the bar charging not only faster with each attack but also from receiving attacks from the enemies. Now hopefully we can show off at least the head break in this fight. I don't think he's going to have enough um, HP for me to break both, especially without any armor skills to help me in that regard. <laughs> That's a pretty good attack of his where he just gets back on the tail and does a quick little one-two kick. The reason is when you're up close and personal trying to lay in a combo flurry of attacks there if you haven't flinched him, you can just really, really quickly get up there and get those 1-2 kicks into you before you've got a chance to really get out of the way through evading after your weapon movement. So you'll see me often getting done by that. And he's already got a limp, yeah. Being an introductory monster, he's not going to have a lot of defense. If you see him run to... got his head again. To I think it's area number seven. He'll go and eat an egg. Which I've got some footage of and I'll show you in post. Yeah, I'll put it up in the um, top right hand corner or something like that. It's really really cool. But this is going to be his um, tired mode, his exhausted mode. The exhaust mode tends to last longer for monsters in this game versus in for you, I find. Um, they'll be tired and panting and stuff for quite a while. But they'll break that up with um, doing attacks every now and then. Actually, this guy's having a pretty energetic uh, fatigue mode. A very energetic one. It's like he's trying to make a liar out of me. <laughs> but he should be um, should be stopping to have another pant in a sec, I would hope. Unless something has happened to make him break out of it. Yeah, maybe because he's in his final moments, he's nearing death. He's got to summon those reserve batteries. Now I'll let him limp off. He would have done it anyway. <laughs> he's gonna go down to this next area down here where he sleeps. I'll give him a chance to sleep as well. Now I've currently got my hunter art charged once again. 
So let's cross my fingers that I can actually show that off. But yeah, I love the um, the Belner armor and the Belner longsword. All the Belner weapons seem to have been carved out of the mountain and out of the rock. And um, they're a very, very good design. Some of them have fossils in them and stuff like that. You can probably see some sort of uh, plant life within the um, longsword there. It's really, really nifty. Guy should be asleep now. Interestingly, as you level these up, the weapons that is, they can branch off into an obsidian, I believe, an obsidian version of what they are, getting a darker skin, darker palette to it. And with our magnified attack on the sleep attack, we have broken his crown, so it's all frayed and stuff like that. You definitely want to break his crown when you're trying to make his gear. All right, we got the counter is one of the most damaging hunter arts in the game if not the most damaging hunter art in the game does massive damage don't know what it's going to be called in generations but it's like mirror flower um, counter basically <laughs> it's a very loose way of translating that one you see the sakura petals, the cherry blossom petals coming out. Oh, what a boss. As I see all these little Macau jumping across in the foreground, that's cool. I hold no hope for breaking the tail before he dies. Too lazy to sharpen my sword. <laughs> Probably going to pay for it too. Okay, yeah, let's see if we can't finish this up pretty soon. Oh, so close. Man, he's going to punch me to death. I shouldn't be scared of the Great Macau. <laughs> I shouldn't be. Alright, mate. It's about time. Ooh, it's going to do that attack. Kind of reminds me of Catch a Watcher, that one. How he's spinning around, slapping the ground. He's doing it with his tail though. Ketcher did it with his big front claws. But there we go. The Great Macau, defeated in low rank with the Belna series of armor and longsword in Adept or Bushido style. Hope you guys have enjoyed this introductory episode to my playthrough of Monster Hunter Cross. We're not going to be taking as leisurely an approach in the next episode where we'll be getting straight into the high rank version of Grace Macau. So please look forward to seeing that one. All right, guys, hope you have a good day. If you would like to help me out, think about dropping a like and a subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you next time. Goodbye for now.